Hello and welcome to a new Lua tutorial. As you can see in this episode, what I'm going to discuss is darkness. Coming as a new feature in this version is the addition of like darkness zones in which players, enemies, other objects can all emit light and uh, move around. Do stuff in the darkness without seeing much. So. Uh, to accomplish this, I have a few lines of code which I want to walk through real quick. This darkness field, darkness.create function, uh, creates the entire dark area. Uh, what we're gonna do in a minute is uh, play around with these a little bit to see what we can uh, do with this. There's fall off uh, functions, shadow functions, uh, which come at the cost of uh, performance, but um, if I take a look at what they are called. I can show you what these look like. If you enable shadows, you can see there are like shadows cast by the blocks as I jump over the ledge. Uh, so that's what shadows are, uh, obviously. I'm gonna leave them at default right now. The number of maximum lights uh, that the field can have. Uniforms for a shader and the shader themselves uh, itself. These uh, we will not tackle. I'll just mention that they exist. Priority type, the priority type, which uh, can either be set to uh, distance, size, or brightness. So uh, that's priority uh, based on which uh, the top 60 lights are uh, getting rendered, uh, based on max lights. There can be bounds specified, uh, which uh, specify the boundary of the darkness zone, so that you don't uh, have one encompassing an entire section, but just part of it, which we'll return to later. Uh, the bound blend length, uh, which is just like a fall off at the end. Uh, the section, minus one is all sections. You can specify a single section, but also a table of sections. Ambient, which is the uh, ambient color. Um, right now, ba base ambient is just something internally, which is like this really, really dark color. Uh, you can also change this to be like color, but not red. Uh, and this is gonna look horrible. As you can see, um, <laughs> you can use darkness to create some kind of bloody scenario uh, in your levels. If you just change the color a bit, color that white, of course, then makes it so that you can see absolutely nothing different. Because there is no darkness if there is white darkness. So, uh, let me just get rid of this for a second. I'm just gonna set it to nil, maybe we want to change it later. It's through defaults to base ambient. Priority, the priority of the darkness, uh, if we move this way far back to like minus 75, then it will not encompass stuff like blocks and the player, but only like uh, cast a little uh, shadow in the background of it. Distance field was something experimental which I forgot to copy out of the code before recording. Uh, and enabled uh, obviously means uh, it's the darkness field currently enabled. If you d uh, disable it then the d section is not dark at the moment. <clears throat> right. So uh, down here I created player light which uh, is created as such with darkness.light, x coordinate, y coordinate which uh, I overwrite by uh, attaching the light later. Uh, then a radius and the strength and the color. Of course we can also again say color.red which will then make Mario extremely bloody in his light and now he's radiating a very hostile aura which the enemy doesn't appreciate and kill him. So um, of course what we can also do is we can make the light less intense but therefore um, much much bigger which will uh, give us like this big very faint red light on top of Mario, um, and of course we can make it much smaller with like 32 pixels but an intensity of 5 to give it a very hard look but um, be like surrounding Mario a little bit. And of course we can play with these numbers as, uh, as much as we want to get uh, different effects. Uh, this line uh, adds the light to the darkness field so that we can actually see the light. If I remove this light, uh, then the light exists in the scene but uh, doesn't have a single darkness field it is associ associated with, so it uh, doesn't actually generate any light. <coughs> and on start is uh, where I attach the light because the player doesn't exist before on start. 
uh, as we previously already knew. This uh, means that we want to snap the light because otherwise it would uh, keep the offset from previously and uh, just lag around somewhere in the distance. So uh, what I want to do right now is I want to just quickly show you a little bit more about uh, making your lights and uh, stuff. So what I want to do is I want to make like a static light in the scene which like um, takes the coordinates of this background object here. Like you know these lamps from uh, Mario 3 can take the X and Y coordinates through the context menu. I'm gonna just quickly copy these lines and I'm gonna take the X coordinate, take the Y coordinate and I'm gonna make an orange light I think which is uh, kinda big but uh, also not as intense as the player light right now is. Oh no! Ah, uh, I copied um, I copied something by accident. So uh, I only refreshed the uh, section instead of like updating it. As you can see, there's like this light now. Uh, I'm gonna make the player light a little bit smaller so that we can better see what's going on. So as you can see, there's a light here now, but it's like offset in a weird way. This is because um, the coordinates of objects are top left centered. So uh, what we kind of need to do is we need to send them manually if we don't snap the object. And since we don't want to get our lamp right now because we're lazy, uh, we can just add 16 to these numbers that will then center the light properly on top of the lamp. And then we have our own little lamp in the scene, which beautifully ov overlaps with Mario's still bloodshot uh, aura. Furthermore, uh, by manipulating sections, as I've already said, if we uh, enter zero here and take a warp pipe, that then what we can do is um, only have this darkness field in the first section and in the second section everything is bright again, except for the background which I didn't add. Unless I type a cheat code to get the, uh, the water. In order to show you uh, how it looks like in several sections, I have uh, replaced section with sections and have uh, made a table out of it and I've set the priority back to zero. So as you can see, now the darkness field exists in both sections and here Mario is the only bloody thing that exists. The last thing I would like to touch on uh, today is the bounce thing over here. Uh, bounce uh, is a set of boundaries which you can specify in uh, three different ways through a table. So uh, one way is to just specify uh, left top, right, bottom. <clears throat> you can also specify uh, them as uh, named fields in the table, so left equals x, top equals something else, right equals something else, bottom equals something else. But I what I want to do is I want to do x equals uh, something, then y equals something, then width, and then height. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this uh, quickly with the camera coordinates at the start. So now that I have entered uh, the uh, boundary over here, I can go back in and see what it looks like. The uh, darkness boundary <coughs> just kind of exists in this uh, 800 by 300 space with like this blend length of 64 as we have specified. If you want to change the blend length, you can of course do so with like a higher number, for example 100. Now we can see that the fall off is like a greater length and it's even less darkness. So I hope you learned something today about how to make your levels darker and uh, I'll see you next time.